a 54-year-old lady with a strong genetic history of heart disease had a sudden onset of crushing chest pain and palpitations. See what happened next. So Camille, tell us about this 54-year-old lady with this increased risk of heart disease and her genetics. So she came to us very concerned because she had been having intense symptoms of chest pain and also fluttering in the chest pretty frequently. And her father had passed away around the time of her current age due to a heart attack. And she knew she had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and she wanted to get a deeper evaluation to see what was going on and what she needed to do. So did she try to make any lifestyle changes on her own? Yes, so she had tried the Mediterranean diet based on something she'd read online, but despite cutting out certain foods like some red meat, she still had the chest pain, the fluttering, and she was getting more and more concerned about this. You know, it's interesting that you mention that because oftentimes we see patients who come to us and they've made lifestyle changes that make cuts here and there. But one thing we notice is that once you have advanced disease, the lifestyle changes you make have to be pretty aggressive and pretty definitive. So what did we find? What were the pertinent findings on her assessment? So her blood work showed that the bad cholesterol called LDL was very high. It was 148, should be around 70. She also had high lipoprotein little a, this marker is associated with increased risk of heart disease and death from heart disease, and her level is six times above the normal limit. Mm. And then on her treadmill stress test, there were signs of ischemia, meaning there were EKG changes that indicated she wasn't getting the extra oxygen to her heart that it needed when the heart was working extra hard. And then we followed that up with a CT angiogram of the heart that did show a mild amount of blockage in the left side of the heart. Well, you know, these are interesting findings because here's a patient who has pretty significant symptoms. She has a high risk of heart disease and truly does have heart disease. However, an angiogram did not show any amount of disease that was amenable to the typical things that we treat with heart disease, such as stenting and bypass. Now, most people may think, and many cardiologists alike, they think that she's not at risk for a heart attack, but I would argue that she's at high risk for a heart attack because you pointed out the increased LP little A. The lipoprotein little A, as you point out, increased the risk of a clot forming. And we know patients with a small amount of plaque, you have plaque rupture due to inflammation, which is like a biochemical fire. It's sort of like a plaque that has a pimple that can rupture. It's inside the artery. If that happens, you can form a sudden clot and close off the artery. So you don't have to have very major blockages or stenosis in the arteries to have a heart attack. You can have very tiny plaque, and that tiny plaque can rupture and cause a clot to form and close up that artery. So she was at increased risk because she had a biological marker that indicated that she was at increased risk for forming these clots, and that's the lipoprotein little A. And many people think that you cannot effectively reduce lipoprotein little A because it's genetic. However, we have information stating otherwise. After these findings, how did you decide to intervene on this patient? So we focused on the nutrition and we met with the kitchen and the culinary team and prescribed a plan with food levels zero to six. So that encompassed lots of raw vegetables, certain fruits and whole grains, beans, lentils, those type of foods as well. And I also added Lipid Balance, which is a supplement that we have engineered with high quality ingredients that contains niacin, which is one of our B vitamins, and it contains red yeast rice. So that helps to lower the bad cholesterol, lower some inflammation, and boost your good cholesterol. And then I also prescribed her berberine. Berberine comes from a plant, but it's similar to the prescription drug in a way called Repatha. So it also helps to lower the bad cholesterol, it improves metabolism, and it can even help regulate how you respond to insulin, which is an added benefit. This nutritional intervention of yours is going to be done on top of what she had already changed and made, which is the Mediterranean diet. So she's coming off the Mediterranean diet onto a defined plant-based diet, food level zero to six. 
So there's an important you know, before and after contrast here. So interesting intervention. And I look forward to seeing what the outcome is. So what was the outcome? So our chest pain with the intense tightness and the fluttering went away really quickly within the first two weeks. And then after the four weeks, I did reassess those abnormal biomarkers by redoing blood work. And that showed a 21% reduction in the bad cholesterol and that lipoprotein little a decreased by 17%. And then her inflammation measured by the high sensitivity C-reactive protein went down by 46%. Wow, wow. So these are amazing changes and of course, the nutritional intervention here was the underlying treatment. Now notice this is someone who's not coming off of the standard American diet, but she's coming off a diet that's perceived to be a healthy diet, and that's the Mediterranean diet. And when she went from the standard American diet to the Mediterranean diet, she had no significant improvements. However, when she went to the Mediterranean diet to the defined plant-based diet, her symptoms began to subside immediately. So this goes to show the power of this intervention. And the power of this intervention, we saw in the, the medical literature, that it reduces inflammation, which I think was an underlying driving process behind her disease and symptoms. And we were the first to show the reduction in the lipoprotein level A using nutrition. Other nutritional plans, such as Mediterranean diet and other diets, have not been successful in reducing LP level A but the defined plant-based diet was the first to show a reduction in LP level A. And this is what we continue to use as one of our major interventions to reduce this very potentially lethal biological marker for such a lethal disease. So it underscores the importance of a defined, precise nutritional intervention, not just any kind of dietary changes will make a difference when you have disease this far advanced. Great job on this patient who was at risk for having a heart attack. And thankfully, we were able to steer away from the unfortunate outcome that her dad had. So I hope you got a lot out of this. And as usual, leave all your questions and comments in the comment section. And until next time, take care. Thanks for watching. If you got value out of this video, please like it, subscribe, and hit the notification button to see our next show.